This lesson is part two of section 9.5. We're going to continue to look at inverse trig functions and to evaluate the compositions of those trig functions. Um, but now we're just going to increase the difficulty a little bit. We're also going to transform trig expressions um, into algebraic expressions in terms of like x or y or some variable. We'll also use trig identities to help us evaluate the compositions of trig functions when they get a little bit tougher. So let's begin here with our first example. Now this problem really is a review of yesterday's material, but I just want to make sure that I'm actually reinforcing this concept for you because when you see the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi, 7 pi over 6, I don't want you just to assume that this is equal to 7 pi over 6. You can't just use your fundamental inverse identity here and say, okay, that's definitely equal to you know 7 pi over 6. The reason is, is this is definitely not within the range of your inverse cosine function whose range is 0 to pi. So we can't get that answer. So what we're going to do is take a look at the cosine of 7 pi over 6, because this is definitely a defined value. Okay? The cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. So now the question is, what angle measure gives me a cosine value of negative root 3 over 2 that falls within 0 to pi? Now that value, remember it's got to fall between 0 and pi here, is going to be this pi over 6 family, uh, which is that makes that uh, 5 pi over 6. So that's the angle measure that I'm going to get from this. So here, the output for this should be some angle. Okay, that's going to come into play here too. I want you to know that when you're taking the cosine of some um, angle, you're going to get a ratio, right? There's my ratio. And then when you take the inverse cosine of a ratio, you end up with an angle measure. So here, that answer is 5 pi over 6. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of 7 pi over 6, which is equivalent to taking the inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2, that is going to equal 5 pi over 6. So we modify that angle a little bit to make sure, the 7 pi over 6 here, we modify that angle to make sure that it ends up falling between 0 and pi. Now in my next example, I have the inverse cosine of the cosine of pi over 6. Now in this case, it is safe to assume we can use our fundamental inverse identity to conclude that this is going to equal pi over 6. Uh, the reason is, as pi over 6 falls within the range of my inverse cosine function. So even if I do check this and kind of do the work here, you'll end up right back here with the uh, pi over 6 angle measure. Now in C, we have the cosine of the inverse cosine of 3 over 2. Here, again, you don't want to just assume that this is equal to 3 over 2 even though we have another fundamental inverse identity that says f of f inverse of x should equal x. In this case, because these, this x value, this 3 over 2, that ratio, this is not within the domain of your inverse cosine function. The domain of your inverse co cosine function is between negative 1 to 1. So the domain of inverse cosine is between negative 1 to 1 since this is definitely not within that domain, then this is an undefined value, okay? And because it's undefined, that means um, you can't take the cosine of that value. So this has no value here. The next set of problems might look like they're review problems, but they're actually different. So even though we're dealing with the composition of functions here, the ratios that we're using are much different than what we saw yesterday. Um, yesterday we would give you something like find the inverse cosine of one half. So you're looking for right an angle since the the inverse cosine's output is an angle measure. So we're thinking in our head what is the what cosine here, or I'm sorry, what angle measure gives me a cosine of one half? Well, I know that that's going to be pi over three. So theta is pi over three, but that's only because I have this value memorized. Um, that's a specific value on the unit circle that we've taken the time to memorize. I definitely don't know. What angle measure gives me um, a cosine of negative 5 thirteenths? This is not something that we've ever memorized or care to know. So um, a lot of students will get confused here thinking that they can't continue on this with this problem, but you actually don't even need to know the angle measure here. You can completely bypass what that angle measure is because really what you're trying to evaluate here is the tangent of some angle measure. This whole thing gives you an output of theta and you're really just evaluating the tangent of theta. So by looking at what we're given here, since we know the inverse, um, uh, we're trying to take the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths, that means that the cosine of theta 
must equal negative 5 thirteenths. So we can use that information now to solve for my tangent of theta. So I know that I'm just looking for a y over x here. Well, I want to depict here the cosine of theta equaling nine, negative 5 thirteenths. So I want to make sure when I draw this angle here, I'm just going to create a right triangle. I'm going to draw that in the second quadrant because it's got to fall between 0 and pi. Okay, so even though here I would get um, a, you know, a negative cosine as well, I need to make sure that it's um, within the uh, range here of our inverse cosine. So it's got to be between 0 and pi. All right, anyhow, in my triangle, I've got a segment here. Oops, here's theta. So I've got an adjacent side that's 5. The hypotenuse here is 13. That missing side here has to be 12, which means now that I can calculate the tangent of theta. y over x is simply 12 over negative 5. So to answer this original question here, the tangent of the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths must be negative 12 fifths. So in E, we're going to run into the same issue here where we're looking at the arc cosine of 3 fourths. So we're looking for some angle measure whose cosine is 3 fourths. That is definitely not a value we have memorized on our unit circle, but do not fret. You don't need to know that angle measure because you're just going to make the substitution here to say, okay, that's definitely theta, right? This cosine inver inverse cosine here of 3 fourths will give me some angle measure. And now all I need to do is find the sine of that angle measure. So this gives me some information. The cosine of theta has to equal 3 fourths. So I'm going to draw this here. Now I'm going to place this in the first quadrant because I have a... Uh, a positive cosine, but also because um, I can't put it down here in the fourth quadrant. Remember, this has to be between 0 and pi. Oh my gosh, great half circle. All right, so that means I've got, um, oops, that's wrong, an adjacent side of 3, a hypotenuse of 4, which makes that missing side here uh, root 7. So the sine of theta has to be root 7 over 4. So the sine of the arc cosine of 3 fourths is root 7 over 4. Okay, in F we're supposed to evaluate the cosine of the arc sine of negative 1 over 5. And again, if I try to evaluate here, I can't find theta because um, I don't have that value memorized. So I, I'd either need to use a calculator or I'd give up. But I don't want to give up because I know that this here is just an angle measure. So I have the cosine of theta, and I also know that the sine of theta is equal to negative one-fifth. When I draw this triangle in, um, this is going to have to be, well, your only options would be for a negative one-fifth for your sine in the third or fourth, but we have to place it here because we want to make sure that it's in the range of the sine inverse sine function, which is from negative pi over two to pi over two. So that's where our angle, our triangle has to lie, so our angle here has a sine of negative one-fifth, which means then that the opposite side here is one, and that hypotenuse is five. So we'll use Pythagorean theorem here to solve for that missing side. So if this missing side is two root six, then the cosine of theta is two root six over five, which means that the cosine of the arc sine of negative one-fifth is two root six over five. These next couple of questions are a bit more abstract, which is why I have them labeled under, um, you know, tougher examples. However, really, the way to go about this is no different than what you were just working with in the last few problems. Um, when you look at the secant of the arc sine of 2x minus 1, I want you to recognize that this is really just an angle. So you're finding the secant of theta. You already know from this statement here that the sine of theta has to equal 2x minus 1. Now this is where students will get confused because um, they don't go any further here. They, they're not really sure what to do. But remember, sine of theta is a ratio. So let's make that ratio here and call that 2x minus 1 over 1. That way we have an opposite side and a hypotenuse if we were to draw a right triangle. So I'm going to place this right triangle in the first quadrant because I need that theta here is uh, the sine of theta is positive, but also because it's got to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we're going to place in the first quadrant, and um, that means that this side length here is 2x minus 1, and my hypotenuse is 1. So now to find the secant of theta, which is 1 over the cosine of theta, so it's the inverse, I'm sorry, it's the reciprocal of the cosine function, 
I need to find this value here, which I'm going to call B for right now. So I've got um, 1 squared, that hypotenuse squared, is equal to 2x minus 1 squared plus b squared. So let's solve for b. So I have 1 minus 2x minus 1 squared equaling b squared. Now I will take the square root, but I will throw away the negative value because my cosine here is positive. So I've got uh, the cosine of theta then equal to, here's my b value, right? I'm just going to show that that's where that calculation is. Um, so I'm taking my adjacent side, 1 minus 2x minus 1 squared, all over my hypotenuse 1. So when I find the secant of theta, all I need to do is take the reciprocal of this. So the secant of theta, which is equivalent to the secant of the arc sine of 2x minus 1, is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 1 squared. So again, can be a bit more abstract, a little tougher. You're dealing with a little bit more algebra here. And you can definitely get stuck just basically on this first statement. So make sure you're always thinking that you know, the sine of theta is going to give you a ratio. So write that as a ratio. Don't get stuck with just re leaving it as 2x minus 1. Number three, we're finding the secant of the inverse tangent of x. So here I want to recognize that that is just an angle measure. So I have the secant of theta. Now I know from here as well the inverse tangent of x means that the tangent of theta is equal to x. So here I have a ratio. Again, don't stop when you get to here and get stuck because you want to write that as a ratio. This is the opposite over your adjacent side. You can think of it as y over x also, but in terms of a triangle, it's your opposite over your adjacent side. So I'm going to create a triangle, and I'm going to place that triangle in the first quadrant because this is positive, right, x, but also because um, it's got to lie between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so I've got um, the opposite side, that's x. My adjacent side, let's make that over 1, becomes 1. So now I'm solving for my hypotenuse here. So the hypotenuse is going to be, let's call it c. So c squared is equal to 1 squared plus x squared. So if I take the square root, and it's going to be just the positive, I, I just drop the negative completely here because I, I don't want that negative value because obviously your hypotenuse can be negative anyhow, but um, we end up with 1 plus, or the square root of 1 plus x squared. So if I want to find the secant of theta, that's really the reciprocal of your cosine. Okay, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So really this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So we're taking 1, or I'm sorry, no, that's not my hypotenuse. This is my hypotenuse. So let's come back up here. The secant of the inverse tangent of x should be the hypotenuse, which is this value, the square root of 1 plus x squared, all over my adjacent side, 1. So if I simplify that ratio, it's just the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now in our next example, we're going to do something that um, is actually pretty tough to do conceptually. The work that you're going to do is algebraic, so the once you get started, it's not too bad, but getting started is, is, in my opinion, the hardest part here. So I'm supposed to express the quantity theta minus the tangent of 2 theta as just a function of x when I'm given that the tangent of theta is equal to x over 3, and theta lies in the first quadrant. So basically what this is asking is I don't want to see anything with theta in this expression anymore. It's got to just have x's in it. So I go back to this and I say, okay, if I isolate theta, so isolate theta, then I would have theta is the inverse tangent of x over 3. So then I can make at least one substitution here. Theta is no longer theta. Now it's the inverse tangent of x over 3. So that's good, making progress. So let's write that um, and make that substitution here. All right, now for the second portion here, okay, so I have minus the tangent of 2 theta. Now I don't want to make the substitution here and put that in for theta. What I want to do here is rewrite that. So let's use our uh, double angle identity for our tangent function. So that's equivalent, let's just write it underneath, to 2 times the tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. 
Okay, so look at what this has done for me. Now, the tangent of theta is given, and it's in terms of x. I also can square that tangent of theta here, and it would still be in terms of x. So, lucky for me, I don't have to do much work here to make that substitution. I've got the inverse tangent of x over 3 minus this value here. So let's let's just uh, make that substitution underneath. So the inverse tangent of x over 3 minus 2 times um, x over 3 over 1 minus x over 3 squared. All right, so I'm running out of room over here, but I have the tan uh, the inverse tangent of x over 3 minus 2 thirds x over 1 minus x squared over 9. All right, so one of the uh, easiest ways, I think, to simplify this complex fraction here is to multiply by 9 over 9. So we're left with 6x over 9 minus x squared here. So I have the inverse tangent of x over 3 minus uh, 6x over 9 minus x squared. So this is the expression theta minus tangent of 2 theta written in terms of just x. Okay, I'd like you to try this next example there um, on your own and then check with the key. All right, the last portion of the lesson is going to be the toughest, I think. So here we really have to make sure we understand our identities and how our composition of functions work. So we've got the cosine of pi over 6 plus the arctan of 1 half. Now, people will get really confused. They try to even distribute. Um, definitely do not do that. What this is saying is you're taking um, the cosine of an angle measure plus, remember this is just an angle measure as well. So I'm actually going to get rid of the fact that it's got all this crazy notation here and just call it theta instead. So now I have the cosine of pi over 6 plus theta. Well, I definitely can do this. This is just angle addition for the cosine. So I've got, this is equal to the cosine of pi over 6 times the cosine of theta minus the sine of pi over 6 times the sine of theta. Now if we continue to go through here and, and um, evaluate, I have the cosine of pi over 6, which is going to be root 3 over 2, times the cosine of theta, which I'm not going to do anything with quite yet, then minus the sine of pi over 6, so 1 half, times the sine of theta. All right, so we have to remember that we don't have to know what theta actually is in order to find the ratio, the cosine of theta. So that ratio can be found just by bypassing here and, and saying, well, if I know that the arctan, um, or we're finding the arctan of 1 half, well, then that's really like saying the tangent of theta is equal to 1 half. So I can set up a right triangle, and I have the opposite over the adjacent side, so 1 here and 2 here. Let's solve for the hypotenuse. We get root 5. So that means I can actually evaluate quite easily the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. So the cosine of theta will come from taking the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The sine of theta will come from taking my opposite over my hypotenuse. So we can rationalize here. We have 2 root 5 over 5 and root 5 over 5 here. Now, um, make the substitution in. So we have root 3 over 2 times 2 root 5 over 5 minus 1 half times root 5 over 5. And simplifying here, we have 2 root 15 over 10 minus root 5 over 10. So 2 root 15 minus 5, root 5, sorry, all over 10. So that's how we can evaluate this which looks like a beast at first, but actually isn't too bad. So it, it is building on a lot of skills. You need to know your angle addition first. So cosine, cosine, chain, sine, sine. Um, and then after that, you need to realize that you don't need to, sorry, I keep doing that, hitting the wrong button. Um, you don't need to find the angle measure. You just need to know what the ratio is. So you'll set up your, your triangles and find your two um, missing ratios and then make the appropriate substitutions. Okay, last but not least, I would like you to try number seven on your own. Um, in this case, I'll just give you a hint here. Remember that the inverse sine of x is really just theta. So go ahead and get started on this question. 
Go ahead and check with the key. Make sure you're comfortable with something like that because you might see a quiz check on a similar problem. All right, nice job. See you in class tomorrow.